And as investigators comb through that wreckage in and around the Potomac, 12 News is learning more about those men and women and how they work to determine a cause of a crash. Well, one place that gives us some insight into investigating aviation incidents is Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott. 12 News journalist Sean Rice got exclusive access to their lab. He joins us live from Prescott. And Sean, what did you find out from aviation experts there? Yeah, Tram and Troy, good afternoon to you both. It's safe to say that this crash midair collision happening in our nation's capital last night has really come as a shock to the entire aviation community. Here at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott, Professor Bill Waldock started their aviation safety program some 43 years ago. It's all in hopes of giving students an idea on how to try and prevent a midair collision like we saw last night. Today, he took us on a tour of their very own crash lab. It's giving us a firsthand look at how these types of aviation disasters are investigated. Investigate everything. They evaluate the physical evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, we take them through evidence documentation, photography, and all the other technologies we have available now. How important is it when you first come upon a plane wreckage? What are you first initially looking for to determine how that may have, uh, how the crash may have happened? Well, that's a good question. Uh, what I what I teach them in class is you got to get the big picture first and kind of spiral your way in. So the first period of time you're on scene, you're going to just spend time looking at what looks right, what looks wrong, and begin to triage how you're going to approach the investigation itself, what kind of expertise you might need to bring in. I've heard that that space, specifically Reagan International, with the amount of military activity that's around there, it can be a very what some are considering a chaotic airspace or that, that you need to be communicating. Do you well, think that at all factored in at all? Space itself. It's some of the tightest airspace you're ever going to run into. Uh, I, I've started using the analogy. It's sort of like a large-scale ballet where all of the, pl the people have to be precisely where they have to be in space, in time, and if anybody gets out of position, you get a catastrophe. It seems like in this situation, it, it within hours turned from rescue to re to recovery. Give me your analysis of, of how they were able That's to make easy. that determination. Temperature of the water, and we know the people are in the water, and the time of useful consciousness in 40 degree water is about maybe four or five minutes, depending on your build and a few other variables. Uh, by an hour, they're hypothermic. Yeah, Bill really is a wealth of knowledge on these airline disasters. He also mentioned to me that when something like this happens, where there is a airline disaster, where there is major loss of life, the public is really going to want answers very quickly. He urges some caution there. He says the NTSB and FAA investigation, a full report likely won't be available for some six to eight months, sometimes a year or more. So he really urges people to have a lot of uh, patience with those investigators as they work to, de de to determine a potential cause. Coming up tonight on 12 News at 5 and 6, we will have much more from my conversation uh, with Professor Bill Waldock and our visit here to the crash lab at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. We're live in Prescott, Sean Rice, 12 News. You know, he talked about walking around the crash site and looking for what's right and what's wrong, but you know, you look at a crash, it seems like everything's wrong, right? The eye to be able to spot something that may have been a problem before the plane went down. That's the science, right? Yeah, yeah. It's really a very complicated process. He took us through each of these crash sites. They have some five to eight different crash sites here. And he, he pointed out really specific details. These are real life crash sites, exhibits that they've set up here. And he pointed out really specific details that will give investigators really good insight into how something like this may have happened. And so that's likely what's going on in Washington, D.C. Uh, as we speak, Troy. Mm -hmm. So interesting that they have different scenarios, real life scenarios, and each and every one they can learn, you know, very distinctive things from each site there. Yeah. Yeah, it's really it's really awesome to see and it's it's great to see that uh, students here in Arizona specifically are able to uh, have this have this knowledge. He says a lot of these folks will really uh, become investigators for either the NTSB or the FAA and in the future may be on site for disasters like this, uh, working to give people answers as quickly as possible. Yeah, Tram. I'm getting uh, hands on knowledge up there yeah. just north of the valley. Sean, thank you. Interesting report.